Welcome to Prosperity in a Pandemic. Um, and, and today I have a special guest and you'll see why I'm wearing uh, my cat ears today because um, I'm so excited to introduce you uh, to Vitalia Vidosova, Aurelius Accounting, but also she calls it Animal Accounting. It's 95% accounting and 5% animals. Um, and on this show, uh, and so thanks for being here, Vitalia. Awesome Thank you, Steve. You. Great to be here. It, it's uh, it's it's always exciting. Like Vitaly and I have such wonderful conversations, so it's beautiful to be able to share this with the world today. Um, and we're here for important reasons. Prosperity in a pandemic is where we're showing how and how we can be prosperous. How we can focus on things. There are some things that are happening in the world, and and be active to help and support others. And and we're going to discuss this. Um, also, we're doing the Wow Client webcast, um, and there there will be a link alongside of this, and we're giving that away for free. We're trying our, our goal here with my company is to help as many people uh, through this time and to to be successful, and that's what we want to highlight with Vitalia today. Um, and so, Vitalia, my first question is: When you started to notice that this pandemic was not short. You know, like maybe at the beginning, I think we all thought, oh, how is this going to pass? But then when you notice, oh, my gosh, this is a marathon. What became the most important thing for you? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Steve. The most important thing that became apparent when I realized the pandemic was going to take a much longer time. And, you know, that realization came quite early to me in the process. You know, so. I think that probably by March, I was like, ooh, we might be in for at least 18 months of this. And the first thing that became clear is the need for more information. And so I really read <laughs> everything that I could find and everything that was available um, that affected my clients and that affected the economy and that affected people's health. So, you know, my, my very first priority was educating myself so that I could you know, one, reduce my risk, reduce the risk to others, and then also um, try to really help people because people were in trouble. Yeah. And and with that, and thank you for taking that action. You know, you uh, I know early on we had had conversations and you just took action right away. And I felt the same. It was like, almost like we're business first responders, you know, like we're not there in the clinic medically, but we're responding to what was needed. And like you said, I know you were reading and learning about all the different, uh, you know, opportunities there, like loans and different things and how to run things so that you could help people. So with that said, if you were to highlight like one of the big successes not because of taking that action and doing it, what, what would you say has been the biggest thing that you've been able to find success in during this time? Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there were a few different areas of success. I think the one that most directly, you know, reflects what I was saying about educating myself and getting that information was, um, you know, I very early on got a lot of information about the PPP loans, the EIDL loans, and all of the forms of disaster assistance, um, the pandemic unemployment insurance, regular unemployment insurance. Um, I pretty much, I think I read every article on the PPP that I could find on Google. I mean, I read all the news sources, all of their follow-ups. I read the actual laws, the, the, the Q and A. And as a result, I was able to give that to my clients, but they didn't have to spend hours doing that. They could just say, am I eligible for the PPP loan? And I could say, yes, well, here are the eligibility criteria. Um, in my process, I discovered some amazing resources um, that I wasn't aware of that those resources were able to give me information in real time that um, I think a lot of people didn't have. So at the time when people couldn't get loans from banks because the banks were too full, because you know what happened was the PPP opened and then they, there was a huge flood of requests. And I think within just about a week or so or two weeks, you know, the funds were gone and nobody could even get their applications in. So it's like who got the PPP when everyone who tried to apply uh, struggled. Um, in that time, I managed to find a loan service that was beating everybody else in time. And so when I started using that service for my clients, we were getting loans within one or two days uh, of application, wow. which is, you know, people had been waiting for months, you know, one month, two months. They did thankfully open another window. So, you know, being able to provide such a quick turnaround for my clients for their loans, bypassing the big banks, 
was a huge success that I didn't expect, to be honest. Um, how did I find it? I actually went to Reddit and I read everyone's experiences with the loans on Reddit. And, uh, you know, that might not be a typical uh, place you would go, but it is a place where people are posting about their real time struggles. And I found that was a really awesome community to um, discover in the pandemic. Wow. Wow. And having that, those resources and being able to have all the information and way, way to go, like digging so deep and really learning and reading everything that you could. Uh, so kudos to that. And having had this and been able to bring this to your clients, um, what would you say having had that has done for you and for your clients? Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, it made the difference between business that can keep going and business that has to stop, you know, these loans were, you know, the lifeblood of, of so many businesses. So it was really like, um, you know, will my client be able to make payroll? Will they have to lay people off? You know, these are really big decisions that happen when you run out of money. Um, and the pandemic did just that it just drained everybody really fast. And, you know, so these loans uh, were a form of survival. So I think that was a really big they yeah. help them survive and you know by default you know that's that's my biggest priority is you know uh i kind of feel about businesses like they're my children so i yeah i want them to live and be healthy it's which is a yeah, beautiful metaphor and i know that you are real about that how you feel about that and how passionate you are about helping people. And that's, you know, one of the reasons of many why I wanted to have this discussion with you. And so before having this success and being able to move that and help your clients, you know, what would you said, uh, if we go back some months, um, at the beginning of this, what would you say the biggest challenge was for you? Um, prior, prior to having the success, we were just to highlight that. Cause I know so many people went through things. Um, you know, just want to say, you know, it wasn't always this way. Like now you're having these great results and your clients are having these advantages, which is beautiful. But what was it like before that having had? Yeah, it was, you know, there was a lot of anxiety. Um, I felt a lot of anxiety. My clients felt, felt anxiety. I just kind of, I had the experience where in my mind's eye, you know, I was, I was standing six months from the place where I was, you know, watching the economy collapse. So that was a very scary thing to see. And, and, and sometimes, you know, I, I have to see what could happen in the future so that I know how to act today. Because, you know, with accounting and with finances, sometimes when the disaster comes, you know, that's already a, a too late. So you really have to see things in advance. And so um, when I saw what I saw, I was very scared. And um, I put all my anxiety into doing more work. And so my first response was to work seven days a week and to take on volunteer jobs that I didn't have before for, you know, I just felt like it was needed. I didn't want to see people uh, have a bad experience. And I knew that maybe I can't stop it for everyone, but I can do something for some people, you know. And so I just worked kind of like seven days a week for two months. Um, and when I wasn't serving clients, I was reading and learning and following the pandemic. And so that's not really, um, a healthy way to work, but it's a good way to respond at first, you know, just before you drive yourself into the ground. And so I eventually found myself exhausted and questioning myself and my business and, uh, what I was doing and why I was doing it. And, um, you know, at the same time, there was a lot of civil unrest, there were protests, the world looked like it was on fire. Um, you know, and that really caused me to dig deep uh, to understand, like, what's my role in this? And, and who am I? And why am I here? And, you know, what do I do now? Um, and, you know, it was all, it felt like a, quite a profound deconstruction, you know, I had to kind of go to the very drawing board and uh, try to decide what my business is and what it does that if I'm going to move forward, I want to be relevant and helpful, you know? And so I, I seriously considered, you know, kind of re redoing my whole strategy, which is right. not right. different from what other people have been doing. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, there's been a lot of change and then it sounds like the force of, um, you know, working that much made you reconsider things and and where you are and that's kind of leads uh 
to my next question, just for context to understand the business that you're in, you know, obviously in the name of your company, it's got accounting. So that obviously is obvious, but then, you know, coming back to those reasons why we're wearing our ears today. Um, and I wanted to honor you and your business with the animal accounting and have that be a part of this interview. Um, but maybe just share, um, your, your core purpose, uh, you know, around your business, just so people can understand. That would be great. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, so I'm a CPA with a passion for helping people. Um, and specifically I work with organizations and entrepreneurs that are making the world a better place. And specifically, the type of better is systemic positive change. So I work with organizations and entrepreneurs that are pursuing the creation and maintenance of systemic positive change in the world. Um, and I help them turn their financial anxiety into confidence through process building and making sure they get all their questions answered, education. You know, there's so many things that we do together. And we also have fun. So a very big part of what we do is we bring joy and delight into the financial experience. Yeah, it's so fun. I remember when you and I uh, first started talking about your business some years back, and we and we were, we were talking about how much fun you like to have and bringing the characters in. And and I I know I really encouraged you. You're like, how can I do this? I'm like, just do it because you know so many people, as you know, like starting to look at the numbers becomes really tough for them. It's not why they got into business, you know. Um, not, not everyone is at their active, excited part of their business. So when you bring, when you come with an animal onesie or putting some uh, cat ears on or what, you know, those types of things, it brings so much fun. And so, uh, you know, maybe just share how embracing that. Now you tell me all the time, like clients show up with their onesies on or like I did right here, I am joining you in all the fun and we can have fun uh, while we're doing good business, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and those are some of the most fun moments. Um, you know, last week I got a real taste of my own medicine when I jumped on a call with a new potential client and he was wearing a llama onesie and I didn't expect it. And we just laughed and laughed and laughed. And, you know, that was our very first time seeing each other, you know, and, and our very first interaction was exploding in laughter, you know, and of course we got into the business, we got into the business, but we had a really good time. <laughs> and, and then it opens um, a door it opens a door and you know there are a lot of people that are afraid of their accounting or you know doing those things and when you can bring that ease and and laughter specifically having fun and then get in uh to business it's going to make it so much more enjoyable so so i think it's beautiful. I'm so glad that you're throwing these things, which some people might look as a clash, but you're really bringing it together uh, to help. And, and so I guess I'm really curious, like our time together, you know, in the work, like coming back to the successes you're having now, what would you say is like one thing for those that are watching us or listening to us right now, what's, what's one thing that you've learned from our time together, working together that, that has allowed you to have the success now? If we were to highlight Maybe we can do one or two, but let's just start with one just to see how much time we have. What, what would be one thing you would really point out that made a difference? Uh, I think the thing that made the biggest difference, um, which is, you know, it, it is the thing that you teach, Steve, and you talk about it all the time, but it's the wow client and the wow experience and allowing ourselves to find the people that are really, you know, the people we are meant to be helping. and. Uh, showing up fully, you know, and embracing ourselves fully, embracing them fully, you know, in, in a very real and committed way, because we are on the same page, you know, we are each other's wow people, um, you know, and a big part of that is, you know, gratitude, being able to have an experience where we can have gratitude, we can have laughter, we can have fun, we can have all of these things that sometimes we don't think about our business qualities, but actually they make everything happen faster. You know, because when you're working with people who are great to work with and you're laughing, you're probably getting the work done faster. You know, there's actually scientific evidence that shows that laughter and humor um, speed up, speeds up the process of learning. It reduces resistance. Um, things where you have to convince people, you don't have to convince them anymore. You, you laugh together and then now you are part of the same team. You know, it, it just brings people together so much faster. And then taking that experience and then how do we convey that 
in a way that's fast and efficient, you know, because we don't have time to unfortunately go out and frolic with everyone for hours and hours. Sometimes we only have 10 minutes. So how do we take this experience of, wow, you're awesome. I really want to work with you. You know, how do we take that and how do we create that in a 10 minute time frame that um, also provides enough structure for work to continue to happen after that? That's so beautiful. And those are two of my favorite teachings. In fact, that's why I even mentioned the wow client webcast, because even now, because the thing maybe to poke at, and, and I do talk about this, but especially in a pandemic, and then even just during regular business economy, where things are kind of status quo, or even on an upside, people look at me and they say, what do you mean? Well, if I pick the clients that I really want to work with, like the wow clients, I would have less business. I have to take these other clients on um, because we have to do business. You know, with what you've learned from me, like, what would you say to someone like that? Um, because obviously you've been making it work and you have more than enough clients. In fact, you're always talking to me about capacity. So how do you, uh, if, if from your word, because I could say with mine all the time, but from your words, like, what would you say to that? When you focus on the wow clients, how can you grow your business while you're, while you're focusing on those specific? Well, um, I actually think wow clients are the best way to grow business from my personal experience because they're really, really excited about working with you and they're really excited for what you have to offer. And they're gonna be so thrilled to provide referrals. Um, and when you're really excited to work with them, you're gonna do a fantastic job so that when they're providing those referrals, you know, they received 110% of the value that you could provide, you know. And so it's just happening in such an effective and honest uh, way because it's coming from, you know, the true wow, not like, oh, wow, we're pretending. No, like we are <laughs> in the same, you know, value stream. And as a result, they just bring in more like-minded people. Their projects expand when you have uh, a wow service. Their, their business hopefully is succeeding. As it's succeeding, they can bring in more business. Um, businesses sometimes create businesses. So organizations, now it's one, now it's two. Oh, oops, wow, we have three entities now. You know, that kind of stuff happens. And uh, yeah. if we're bogged down, feeling stressed out and upset, uh, we're going to miss those opportunities. So well said. And thank you for uh, bringing that in your way. Because I... Um, you know, I always call, I think you've heard me say it before, obviously the four R's, but you, you nailed them. And you, you know, it's that you're going to have higher results when you show up because you're, when you're having that wow experience, you show up, they show up. It's like this wow moment. And then through that comes more revenue. That's the second R because they're going to spend more time with you, more money. They'll, they'll even pay more for pro services or products. Um, you know, th I know I do when I have something that is really awesome, I'm willing to pay more for it because I want to keep having it. Right. And so it's, it's amazing. And then, like you said as well, then, uh, the, the raving fans who really gives reviews, the people that love you ecstatically, not like just the, okay, the, those are the hardest ones to get a review from because the other side, the owl, I call it the wow and the owl, the owl, they'll go write a review and it's not what you want. So those are the ones that's even a risk. You always talk about risk mitigation. Like by taking on clients that you shouldn't, you're actually putting a risk on the company, both for morale, even financially, and even to the worst case, they're the ones that might come after you if they don't feel like they're getting what they want, um, which a lot of times happens. They're the ones that become you know, uh, disgruntled, unfortunately, it just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work. And the last one is referrals. That's the last R, you know, so uh, more results, more revenue, more raving fans and more referrals, because I find that wow people, guess who they hang out with? Wow more people. wow people. I know, right? It's, uh, it's, uh, and that's why we get along so much because we both, fun is one of my core values as well. And so, you know, it's all, it's all about fun. If we're not having joy in our life, you know, people ask me, are you a life coach or a business coach? And I say, well, when do you die when you go to work? You know, like, I mean, we're living right now on this. Like if we can't have fun while we're doing this interview, then what, what, are, what are we doing? You know? And, uh, and it also helps us through the challenging times because, you know, going through the, the pandemic and everything that's going on, it definitely has brought some challenges, but look at our, our positive, positive outlook, you know, doing what we need to do to learn all the things that you've done and now be able to have the clients that you really, really want. Um, 
and and be able to do that. So, and then the second thing you brought up is then being able to do it in in a framework. So you have so you can manage it within your day. And so by doing that, by working with Wow clients and be able to manage it in a structure that allows you to maintain your livelihood, what is having that do for you, Vitalia? <laughs> uh, I really enjoy going to work. Um, it just makes my day so much fun. Uh, you know, of course, there's lots of bits that can be very challenging. Um, and accounting by nature, you know, has many challenges. And so when we also have that joy and the ability to have an awesome experience while also fulfilling our life purpose, you know, and our dream, uh, I mean, it's everything that I ever wanted. Uh, I, it's something that I haven't even imagined that I could have. And then now I'm, you know, living it. And I just, I just want to know how I can help more people, how I can expand my capacity and how I can, you know, show up in uh, the best, most authentic way. How do I help people faster? You know, I, I, it makes me so motivated to give more. Um, and, and the other thing is that's kind of happened recently as a result of the pandemic, you know, I got really clear on my purpose. And so I got really clear on who I work with. And what is the wow experience? And my wow experience is working in the area of positive systemic change. You know, so I want to work with people who are changing the world. I want to work with people that are, you know, bringing love and respect to everyone. You know, um, when I look at what some of the creators are creating, you know, all of our wonderful entrepreneurs, it gives me so much hope. And I turn off the news and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to, listen to the news. I'm going to work real hard with my people and we're going to build the world that we want to live in. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Because, um, I often love the words you're using because we can focus on what we don't want and that that's saying, you know, what is resisted persists, right? What we resist persists. So, you know, I love focusing on the creativity and the building. Like, so I often uh, think about the words, like if we focus on the light and we create more light, you don't have to even worry about the darkness. It just goes away because there's so much light, you know? So by focusing on, on the light and, um, and also always come back to that, what Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. And because people watch us more than they listen to us. So by us doing these things, more people are going to come. And that is what's happening. Our, your community is growing. I mean, even to highlight too, well, all this is going on you, you, because of your work. Um, isn't it true? You've saved jobs. And not only that, your own company has hired people during this time. Am I correct about that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I, I mean, I think it's really important to save as many jobs as we can. And, you know, keeping people employed is definitely a priority. And I've been very fortunate to be able to hire and, you know, share that um, at this time. And, you know, what I feel that I'm being called to do is you know, to step up even more and try to provide even more opportunity if I can. It's so beautiful. Like in the 2008 crisis, and maybe you actually, you're the partner that I need to have this happen. In when 2008, I was uh, deep in marketing. I was mostly on the marketing side. And now I've expanded that into systems and doing the thing, business systems. But at that time, even we saved jobs. And I told myself I wanted to make a counter of how many jobs we saved and what a great positive PR yeah. endeavor that would be. Uh, maybe uh, because of your accounting background, you can help me with that. And we can see how many jobs together we could have a little counter of like how many jobs we can save. So maybe we'll earmark that for something that we talk about here in the, in the near future. And that actually is my next question. I'm curious, you know, uh, with the time that we have left, just a few more minutes, what, what is next? You know, now you've had all this success, you know, you're, you're working with your wild clients, you're, you're doing animal accounting and totally living in joy and you're helping people and you're saving jobs. I know you're going to continue to do that, but is there something specific you want to highlight of like, what, what's, uh, what's the next big thing for you? Mm. Well, um, let me think of what is the next big, big thing. Uh, I have so thing many plans. And so well, many ideas. What's the next uh, thing? Well, maybe what's the next thing that you're that you're doing, or or the activity that's important to you now? That also could be a good answer for you know what you're thinking. Just because I think it's good for us to share that, so people can think what what we're up to, you know. So, I I guess I've just had this amazing inspiration around processes and systems 
really helping my clients um, and also my own business systematize and document processes and you know, really looking at what are the things that can cause a process to break? And then how do we build a process that has some self-correcting mechanisms so it doesn't just break? So really focusing a lot on project management, um, improving my own project management, assisting my clients improve their project management, um, and seeing how we can really just do the right things in the right amounts to you know, just get it all done to get it all done yeah. and to make the changes that we need to make in the world. Um, I'm also very, very passionate uh, about making sure that we're reflecting our values in our business. And so one of the things that you talked about was, you know, counting jobs. And um, that brings up the topic of impact accounting. So this is a very kind of new area and an area that I'm just very slowly stepping into. Um, is the idea of impact accounting and how do we measure impact? How do we design systems to capture those measurements? And then how do we report that impact? And, you know, what is the impact that we want to have? You know, so is it, is it, are we saving jobs? Are we educating people? Um, you know, what, what are all of the activities? And so, um, that's, you know, going to be a very long, hopefully lifelong process. And, um, yeah, I'm just continuously kind of recommitting to show up in a, in a deeper, in a deeper way, and to you know, I I want to, <laughs> I want to revolutionize accounting. I want to change the financial systems of the world. I want to I want to create an alternative that really um, respects people, you know, and empowers people. And sometimes people don't feel empowered by financial systems, and I I think that that really sucks. And I'd sure like to do something about it. Um, Another thing I should mention is I, I feel very strongly about the Black Lives Matter movement. So I'm, you know, very specifically looking at my contributions um, to helping Black lives be valued and respected. And I think we need to go beyond uh, the mattering of Black lives, and we need to, you know, embrace embrace each other with love. We need to do more. We need to empower. We need to support. Uh, we need to give gratitude. You know, we there. There's so much that we need to do, and I I am fully embracing that and looking at how can I weave into weave these things into the structure of my business, into the work that I do. How can I, you know, show up um, with the uh, with the best support that I can offer for for justice and for love. It's so it's so beautiful, and I know with your passion and your drive, um, you're going to be able to do it, and. And it's um, it's a beautiful thing, and so I I 100% encourage what you're doing for you to continue on your path. You um, and you know just something that feels important to say is when we talk about systems, because I brought it up, you brought it up now during this conversation. You know, systems sometimes feel so big. I think people then just go, oh, I I, I can't have that right now, or they think it's some computer system, right? Because we're used to having like our phones and our devices. But you know, sometimes a system can be as easy as step one through five, do it this way. And when we do it this way, it's the most proficient. And when you're in your business, even if it's a simple little five step thing that you write on a piece of paper or type it up, then you can notice, oh, what if I change this one step? How much better could it be? It's like putting a magnifying glass on the activities that you do. So then this way you could actually shorten it. And, I, and this is where I really want more business, more abundance and more life. And by putting that magnifying glass, I think that's why Vitaly and I get along so well. And she's even, so, even to the next level than me by examining things and looking at the spreadsheets that you can actually see things that others wouldn't look at and then be able to go to the next iterative. Um, and I know I'm opening up a door and we only have like a minute left in the show here, but the th I just wanted to say that, you know, and I don't know if you have some, uh, one thing like, how can you like, in just a couple sentences, what would be your suggestion to take the first step towards making a simple system, you know, and, and picking one, one thing, you know? Um, I don't know if that is something you do in a short se couple sentences, but I, I can. Yeah. Well, I guess so. You know, the first step is to figure out which system you'd like to look at. And, you know, if you're not sure which one to look at, pick any system, you know, probably pick the one that when you think about it hurts the most. That's probably where you could, you know, make the biggest change. And then um, there's a very wonderful process that I learned in audit called a walkthrough. And a walkthrough is an exercise where you start at the beginning and you end at the end and you walk through the entire process. 
and you examine every document in that process and you really think about, you know, what are the key elements and, and what really needs to happen and you write it down. So you, you record everything and you, you take one transaction, one example of whatever goes through this process and you follow that piece all the way through your entire process. Um, you write it down and then you look for holes. And usually if you do that one, I call it the famous test of one. You do that test of one, you will generally find the problem that you're looking for. And when you're just doing one instance, it's really not overwhelming. It makes it very achievable yeah. and you could probably get it done without within like one or two days. Yeah. And depending on the task, it could even be shorter. So, you know, and I do mm -hmm. love that idea. Pick the thing that's that's bothering you the most, or even if it doesn't bother you, it takes the most time. Maybe it's a really time consuming thing, but just pick one of those things that you would love to improve. And then by putting this examination and do the walkthrough, I love this, by Ty, then you'll be able to see some inroads. That's a beautiful tip. And then this is what allows us to simplify our business and then make it consistent. And, and this allows for us to grow. And, and that's what we want during, that's what prosperity in a pandemic is all about. How do we make those differences? So I think we highlighted so many things, right, Ty? And I know we could do more if we had more time, but this has been a beautiful uh, time with you. And, uh, and, and so I'm just so grateful uh, to have you in my world and, and to be able to be a part of some of these things together. It's been, it's been a privilege having you here. And I just want to remind everyone, we're going to do another free thing called the wow client webcast and that's coming up so my team will put the link there i'm doing that absolutely free and what vitaly was bringing up we're going to talk about in more depth how do we actually only work with our wow clients and do it during this economy right now and then be able to talk about those 10 minute calls that vitaly uh, brought up how do we do it in a shorter period of time and yet be very very useful for our clients our, our customers so i want to give that to you as well so go ahead and register for that and uh, it'll be a Q&A, so it'll be like a live meeting. You'll be able to ask me questions, and I'm here to help you. And again, that's I'm doing that free of charge just so that I can help as many businesses as I can during this time. So once again, Vitalia, so much gratitude for coming on here, sharing with all of us. Thank you for being here today. And um, I look forward to, well, as this progresses, maybe I'll have you back again, and we'll see where we are towards the end of the year. And But uh, keep doing your good work. Thank you, Vitalia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. It's great to be here. Have a great day. Beautiful. Everyone take care. We'll see you again.